It began with 64 teams, and we are down to two in Tampa. And only one will raise a third title for its program at the end of this warm night. The defending champion Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the Baylor Lady Bears, a matchup that took place in this title game seven years ago. We welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Friday night, the first time in the 38-year history of this championship that both semis were decided by five points or less. Let's hope that fate brings us a little bit more of that drama here tonight. Proud, pleased, privileged to be here. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, and Holly Rowe in just a moment as well. And what a matchup, worthy of the marquee and a title tonight. We get the elite defensive group, this Baylor Lady Bear squad, taking on arguably one of the most prolific offensive lineups in the history of college basketball in Notre Dame. And they're led by one of the most clutch performers we've ever seen. They certainly are. The flair for the dramatic lies on the Irish side of the ledger with Enrique Agumbawale on the roster. And you look at where that come from I think it starts with her confidence in the face of adversity individual adversity she remains calm calm in the most pressure-packed moments you take a look at what she's been able to do in first half for second half when it's money time for the Irish Arike Agumbawale comes to play as a team we're talking about four seniors and one junior they are prepared they understand the moments they don't get rattled even when they face deficits to me tonight, it's going to take a special group to keep the Irish from defending that title. And Baylor has a special player in their own right. Lauren Cox is one of the elite players in women's college basketball. She's a rare big who can affect the game like a guard because Baylor's offense runs through her. In the NCAA tournament, the 6-4 forward leads her team in scoring and assist. She can be deadly when she catches the ball at the free throw line. A great passer from there, but she can score as well. She can put the ball on the floor and finish. She can shoot the mid-range jump shot if the player helps down on Kalani Brown inside, and she is a terrific passer. Seven assists in the semifinal game against Oregon. Lauren Cox has been great and All-American, a fellow All-American on that elite front line as well, Holly Rowe. Well, Kalani Brown has been dominant for these Baylor Bears, and if you believe in fate and destiny, then you're going to love this story. It all started in Ruston, Louisiana, where Dewana Jackson played for Louisiana Tech. Her assistant coach was Kim Mulkey. She met her future husband there, P.J. Brown, and their daughter Kalani was on the floor with him celebrating when he won an NBA championship for the Boston Celtics. When she was in about seventh grade, she met her mom's coach, Kim Mulkey. She fell in love with Baylor because of the Brittany Griner era. She was attracted to that big lady that won a championship. And now here she is with her parents in the stands watching her championship moment. It is a full circle kind of championship night for the Brown family. That, I believe, is what we call destiny. And Holly, a chance for Kalani to do something that Brittany Griner did seven years ago. That's defeat the Irish for a title. 39 and 0, no team's ever gone. 40 and 0. Ryder wins the opening tip, and the national championship is underway. Touch in tight. That's impossible to stop. Sims. Oh, that's a nifty move for two. This is a team that is complete. Great wall of Griner. Griner with a buck on the big slide. How about that play? Is there a way she hasn't scored tonight? A special exchange between Kim Mulkey and her two stars. Now the legacy includes a national title. And Baylor, how do you like the sound of this? 40 and 0. The Lady Bears are the national champs in 2012. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish, the defendant defending national champions trying to join this very select group of programs that have repeated as champions UConn Tennessee and Southern California Notre Dame knows and believes they're up to the task tonight you know I think it felt a little different all year it felt a little different because every every game we were supposed to win people are approaching our games differently you know they're playing the defending champs nobody cares nobody's gonna you know just lay down but they're gonna give you everything they have it's not really a business we need to be enjoying it because we play better when we're loose that's me talking <laughs> the tensest coach in America Now let's send you to Molly Haynes for Notre Dame starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Introducing the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Starting at board, a 6'4 senior from Fremont, Nebraska. Number 32, Jessica Shepard. Starting at board, a 6'3 
history grad student from Pearland, Texas, number 11, Brianna Turner. Starting at guard, a 6-0 junior from Princeton, Indiana, number five, Jackie Young. Starting at guard, a 5-11 senior from That's the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Meanwhile, the Baylor Lady Bears seek their third program national championship every seven years, right? 05, 2012, and back in 2019. Wow, we're at another one. A lot of coaches coach a lifetime and never get here. This is what they dream of. We're just all for each other, and when we play like that, I feel like we could be the best, one of the best teams in the country. Like, there's no limit to what we could do. Um, we're gonna keep playing like we've been playing, and now we have the goal of uh, winning this next game and then a national championship. You have talented players in that locker room, great team chemistry, let's go play ball. We prepare for Baylor's starting lineups. Brought to you by Capital One. Here's Molly Haynes. Introducing the Baylor Lady Bears. Starting a guard, a 5'8 junior from Waco, Texas. Number 20, Juicy Landrum. Starting a guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Cypress, Texas. Number two, Dee Dee. Starting a guard, a 5'8 senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, number 24, Chloe Jackson. Starting at four, a 6'4 junior from Flower Mound, Texas, number 15, Laura. And introducing the head coaches from the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, Muppet McGraw. And from the Baylor Lady Bears, Kim Mulkey. These two programs try to win their third national titles. Tip-off is next. The best in baseball. One night a week. One place to watch. Dodgers. Rockies. Sunday Night Baseball. Tonight on ESPN. They arrive here, driven by the same dream. Those rising and hopeful. And those who have done it. Determined to do it once more. All in the field. At the Masters. The one thing missing from her resume was a final four. Cox with a beautiful tip to Brown. How about that play by Kalani Brown? There's a size advantage of Kalani Brown on the interior. The Baylor Lady Bears are headed back to the championship. Connecticut, Tennessee, the only two programs that have ever secured three or more national championships. Baylor and Notre Dame have that opportunity in front of them tonight. D. Kantner is our lead official. Lauren Cox and Brianna Turner are ready for the tip. And at the end of the night, someone's holding up a national championship. Turner punched it out, and it will be Baylor ball to start. Well, at the start, we're going to see the Irish in zone. It's something that Muffin McGraw hopes to play for most of this game. Trying to contain that interior power that makes Baylor on offense so special. Go 
First touch for Cox. Had it knocked away. Tried to rescue it, but into the hands of Ogumbawale. No foul on that play. Ogumbawale missed the jumper. Brown wasn't looking for it. And Ogumbawale comes out with it. You don't want to outlet the basketball to your 6'7 big right there trying to run the floor. Yeah, and when she's not looking. Not looking for it all that time. <laughs> At any point when she's not looking. <laughs> Jackson with the pick. Chloe Jackson breaks the scoring seal on the championship game. So a little sloppy both ways. And not a surprise early in a championship game. Obviously, there's some jitters on both ends. But you don't want to turn the basketball over. I think that's a real key for both teams tonight. Kara, you talked about Notre Dame wanting to play 40 minutes of zone. Nice play. Baylor wants to play 40 minutes of man-to-man. -man. Contrasting styles defensively. How about Lauren Cox? You talked about her early and already making an impact on defense. Their best shooter, Juicy Landrum, off target. Notre Dame, the number one scoring offense in the country this year. Jackie Young kept it alive. Marina Mabry hits the three and gives Notre Dame the lead. A good start. It's really struggled Marina Mabry did in the first half against UConn from beyond the arc, but then turned it up and was a pivotal piece to them securing that win in the semifinal, hitting some big three-pointers in the second half. Cox with the feed and the easy score over Shepard. So we've seen Cox's length assert itself on both ends already, breaking up the alley-oop for Turner on the defensive end, and then just a little bit too much length with Shepard guarding on offense. Mabry, no. And you'll see Baylor in the half court. Whenever a player catches the ball on the perimeter, their eyes immediately look inside. That's where they're trying to get the ball, and that's the best way to do it. I love. Brown just missed it. Turner got it for Notre Dame. Brianna Turner on the push, had it blocked by Cox. The two-time Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year started it at one end, and Landrum finished it. The length of Baylor takes some time to adjust to, and most of the games that Notre Dame has played this season, they've had the superior length. They've had the dominant presence in the post. That is not the case tonight, and we've seen Cox announce her presence with authority here early on. Another oh. offensive rebound for Notre Dame. Exactly, and that was so integral to their victory over Connecticut. 22 offensive rebounds, 22 points off of those offensive rebounds. Landrum's got the range, and she's got the three. Uh, that's a complete breakdown by Notre Dame defensively. If there's one player on Baylor's roster, you don't want to get a clean look. It's Juicy Landrum. But did Muffet tell us? Sometimes defensively we can be unaware and teams score on us when we are unaware. Kalani Brown is limping as she comes back up the floor. Jackson hits the baseline jumper. And Brown is gingerly headed back towards the Baylor bench. Time out. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital. See Kalani Brown getting worked on on the Baylor sideline. Melissa Smith, the freshman, has entered the game for Baylor as Notre Dame tries to shake off a cold offensive start. And another couple of offensive rebounds for Notre Dame. Muffin McGraw told us how important rebounding would be to her team's success today. Landrum, another good look for three. Rebounded by Smith, who's in there for the injured Brown. Well, what a luxury for Kim Mulkey to have a player like Melissa Smith coming off the bench. She's a live wire. She can get offensive rebounds. She can make that free throw line jumper. So they become a little bit more unpredictable offensively when she's in the game. And for a freshman, she's fearless. We saw that in the semifinal game. Watch Kalani Brown here. As soon as she landed and then worked her way up the floor, she was already limping. Holly, what'd you learn? Well, guys, it's actually cramping. She's been on the bench here, sucking down fluids, getting that cramp rolled out. She's been in excruciating pain as that calf muscle is cramping up. They're trying to roll it out right now. Great stuff, Holly. Thank you. Brown, who's their leading scorer, second leading rebounder and shot blocker. 
And one of the most efficient scorers in the country on the bench right now. Jackie Young with a couple of free throws to stem the tie. The foul was on Cox. And she'll get an assist as she finds Smith. And what a great catch by Melissa Smith. And credit Lauren Cox. She didn't see her 6'7 teammate in there, but still willing to make the pass. In the NCAA tournament, Cox leads Baylor in scoring, rebounding, assists, and blocks. And with a 10-point deficit facing Muffet McGraw's team five minutes in, she calls timeout. Baylor's Lauren Cox has been all over the place for this team so far in this game, and she is overcoming so much adversity in a continual health battle. Diagnosed with type 1 diabetes as a 7-year-old, many people can't play sports with that, but she is rewriting those rules. A continuous glucose monitor is sewn into the back of her arm underneath that black bandage. That is an insulin pump that she was showing us that is then also sewn and stitched in to her skin. So if her blood sugar changes throughout the course of this ball game, she receives automatic insulin. It is a great challenge for her. She was hospitalized last year with a dangerous condition called ketoacidosis. So a constant day by day, moment by moment struggle, but she is out on the court and overcoming it all. There's Lauren's parents, Brenda and Dennis, who have basically given Lauren free reign to handle her own medical health. She's got great technology to do that as well as Holly told you about. Jackie Young trying to get some points in the paint for Notre Dame. These are the top two paint point teams in the country. Baylor a clear advantage so far. Yeah, 10-0 so far. And it's interesting. This might not be the game for that. Looking to get Jackie Young going. Speedy Richards guarding Arike Ogumbawale. Expect that matchup most of the game tonight. Staying right with her. A cold start for Ogumbawale. Another offensive rebound for Notre Dame. What a defensive possession, though, by Didi Richards before that. Well, Young got a good look, couldn't get it to go. Turner's put back is true. And this is the way they have to play. I mean, they have to attack the offensive glass with reckless abandon until they start hitting some of these shots. It's going to come down to Notre Dame's guards making shots. And their ability to manufacture quality looks and, and really make some contested shots. That's how good Baylor is defensively. You can't beat them without making some of those. And because Baylor's shooting 70%, Notre Dame can't get into their transition game, which is where they flourish. Jackson makes a difficult contested shot over Mabry. Kalani Brown is back at the scorer's table cheering her teammates on after the early cramping issues. So now trying to post up Jackie Young. Brown coming back into the game for Nalissa Smith, who gave them some good minutes. Enrique Ogumbawale, a hero of last year's Final Four, off to a cold start tonight, 0 for 5, but look at her numbers in the Final Four in the second half in overtime. Here she is. Draws the foul on Richards and a chance at a three-point play. So that's what I'm talking about. You're not going to get too many open looks if you're Notre Dame offensively. So you have to create something. Not an easy shot, high degree of difficulty, but Enrique Agumbawale, her history tells us she can make those shots against D.D. Richards. There's the Agumbawale family. Enrique's brother, Dare, is on the practice squad for the Tampa Bay Bucks, competing for a starting job in the 2019 season. For Bruce Arians, Enrique got a chance to be with her brother a little bit this weekend. Here's Landrum. Shepard with the inside position on Brown. The crossover, Ogumbo Wale sinks it. A quick five. Turner read it, but Brown still caught it. That's what 6-7 will do for you. How strong were those hands yeah. on that? That catch. Player in the front, Turner flying by from behind to get a tip on it. And Kalani Brown just snares it out of the air, puts it in. Mabry for three. A good look that time.
Three second violation against Kalani Brown. Notre Dame ball. Yeah, Didi Richards gets left by the elbow. And Enrique Agumboale puts it in. Look at this catch. Wow. It's pretty good. Snags it out of the air. I love that the guards continue to look for her inside. Again, their eyes immediately looking as soon as they catch the basketball on the perimeter. Enrique setting up the drive. Shepard blocked by Brown. Got it to Enrique. Young punched it out, but it's grabbed by Juicy Landrum. Numbers for Baylor. Landrum to Jackson. In the semifinal game, Chloe Jackson was three for 11. Four for four to start here in this national championship game. And remember, one of those three buckets was the go-ahead bucket late in the game for Baylor. They put the ball in her hands. Jackie Young got free. So much better for Notre Dame when there's movement, right? You have to get size moving. And Notre Dame is at their best in the half court when they're passing, cutting, moving. You'll, you'll, you'll manufacture some quality looks if you do that. Turner with the block on Cox. And on the rebound action, a foul called against Jackie Young of Notre Dame. Well, Baylor. Again, that, that staunch defense that help, helps to feed their transition game. They will run. Richards maneuvering inside, able to put it in, and everybody getting involved for Baylor. All six Lady Bears that have entered the game have scored. Offensive foul called. The last defensive possession for Notre Dame when Brianna Turner came over and blocked the shot, as you see the offensive foul here on Jessica Shepard on the roll, it was what Brianna Turner continually did in the UConn game. When her defense, when her guards broke down, she cleaned it up. And it'll be interesting to see how much that happens here today and how effective she can be with that big front line for Baylor. Richards doing it again inside. Loose ball to Mabry. Shot clock and game clock are about even. The Irish can hold for the final shot, essentially. It's Jackie Young against Juicy Landrum. Got to get something off. Richards knocked it away. Jackson sees the clock, tries to beat the buzzer, and does! Quicker to everything in this first quarter were the Baylor Lady Bears. Quicker to defend, quicker to get out and transition. Great first quarter and great start for them. How about that debut in the championship for Jackson? Baylor shoots 67% against Muffet McGraw's crew. Responsible for the viral moment of the tournament. She's with Holly Rowe when you come back. Welcome back to Tampa here with Notre Dame coach Muffet McGraw. And coach, how do you think your team has absorbed some of those early blows from Baylor? Well, not very well. I think that we we need to work on our spacing. We need to work on getting a little motion in the offense. I think we're going a little too much one-on-one. -on -one. Defensively, we need to wake up, find shooters, box down, rebound. I thought there was an important shot here. Enrique Gumbawali being hounded by Didi Richards went up and made it through contact. How tough are these shots going to be tonight? Yeah, I think everything. We're going to have to really battle for everything. I think we're not used to their size right now, but so we have to do a little bit more playing together. Thank you, Muffet. Yeah. One of the reasons you guys knew this would be difficult for Notre Dame is because of the length of Baylor. And Rebecca, you talk about Lauren Cox being an impact player on both ends. Baylor leads the nation in block shots per game. And it's not just because of 6'7", Kalani Brown. It's more so because of 6'4", Lauren Cox. She has been a disruptor inside. Her length has bothered Notre Dame. This is a Notre Dame team that likes to get out in transition. They haven't been able to do it in the half court. They've been troubled by that length, Garrett. I mean, think about it like this. 
scoring in a certain way. And now all of a sudden you get to the national championship game and it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so I think that set Notre Dame back a little bit. I think mentally they're trying to process, okay, with intelligence, how do we figure out this riddle? How do we score against a team that has length that we haven't seen this year? And you saw the graphic for the points distribution for Baylor. They figured it out pretty well so far early. And Muffet McGraw told us the guards will have to win the day. Well, right now, Baylor's guards are winning the day. Their posts accounted and scored 59%. Baylor's 59% of their points on Friday. Here, it's been the story of the guards. Largest lead of the game so far is this, 11. Baylor in front to start the second quarter. A touch for Turner goes a little haywire and Richards ends up on the ground with it. The jump ball will give it to Baylor. Well, tomorrow night, Virginia and Texas Tech square off in the national championship game. Coverage at 8.30 Eastern on CBS. For more info, go to NCAA.com. But with Virginia and Texas Tech on the men's side, Notre Dame and Baylor on the women's side, first time that both national championship games pit teams from the same conferences against each other. The ACC and the Big 12 well represented tonight and tomorrow. Landrum finds a spot. Richards tipped it for two Turner. Grimawale started 0 for 5 and made two in a row. And that is the second personal foul on D.D. Richards. That makes a difference. Uh, that last play, D.D. Richards was in the mix for the off for the offensive rebound, sprinted back, squared up Agumbawale, and then is fighting to get over the screen. I, I don't see too much there. No, I, I don't think that you make a call at all there. Turner's moving a little bit, okay. Richards hits her, okay. Play on. And Notre Dame gets a look out of it. Enrique uh, Ogumbawale has now started to heat up three of her last five. Keep an eye on that score when Moon Urson came into the game for Dee Dee Richards. Ogumbawale muscled it. Good job by Landrum getting back. Baylor's been really good defensively in transition. Kimulke said, it's been our constant. They are the most efficient defense in the country, according to her hoop stats. Notre Dame is fourth. But those numbers are also evened out against average teams per possession. Brown spinning, showing off the skill. Beautiful move, footwork and finish. Twenty points in the paint already for the Baylor Lady Bears. Young, the floater. A good look for Jackie Young. Mabry tried to squeeze it inside to Turner, and it's turned over. Jackson. What an offensive rebound for Kalani Brown. And how quickly did she get down the floor to be able to get that? I mean, that's a difference maker. That's something that we thought going into this game would lean toward the side of the Irish, the speed of their post players up and down. But Bale... That was blocked by Landrum. She gets the assignment with Richards on the bench, and she picks up the rejection. It's stripped by Jackie Young, nine to shoot. You see Lauren Cox on the left block. Kalani Brown wears out the left block. It's where she likes to live. And how about that move, the spin and the finish? Uh, that's against Turner, who is an incredible defender and using her agility on that play to be able to finish. Turner second in the country in total shot blocks this year. Landrum. Passed it at the final moment to Brown for a chance at a three-point play. Just beautiful basketball. This is a complete clinic by Baylor here in the first half. What they are doing to pick apart the Irish defensively, how they're stifling them on the offensive end of the floor. This is a dominating performance. What a play.
I believe during the course of the NCAA tournament, there's been some questions about Kalani Brown's mobility. I hope she's answered all of those for anyone who was wondering. Her foot speed, her spin moves. We saw her do a dance routine to Tina Turner this morning. Let me just tell you, Proud Mary has never been more proud. Kalani Brown can move just fine. Her mom, D likes the giveaway by Notre Dame as well. Yeah, we saw that at shoot around. The big wheels were turning. <laughs> <laughs> Kara Lawson and Rebecca Lobo are rolling. So is Chloe Jackson. How about a dozen in your first national championship game half? Notre Dame is not known as a great defensive team, but they're known as one of the best offensive teams in the country. Completely disrupted here by the best defensive team in the country. Mabry a quick shot, and that stems the tide again for the Irish. Another three-second violation on Kalani Brown. Well, Thursday at 5 Eastern, the Frozen Four gets underway in Buffalo. Providence and Minnesota Duluth face off in the national semifinals on ESPN2 and the ESPN app, NCAA.com, the home for all 90 championships. First Notre Dame sub of the game is Abby Prohaska. She gets Jackie Young off the floor. A defensive spark. She did a good job of that against Stanford in the Elite Eight. Shepard to Turner for a good look. The movement, passing, quick decisions, that's what gets Notre Dame going. Now, it's harder to do. It's probably the hardest team they've had to play against defensively, but if they can get in that type of mode, good rhythm, three or four passes within a few seconds, got him an open look. Mabry trying to stick with Jackson, but she's going to pick up her second foul. We just saw her mouth that was a push off that's two on Mabry so Young has to come in for her well Brown trying to touch it right back to Jackson right idea but off target Kim Mulkey and Muffin McGraw trying to become just the ninth coach men's or women's at the division one level to win three national championships to truly cement their legacies tonight with a title already success achieved by both coaches and programs shepherd to turner again in and out but a good look urson tried to save it but was out of bounds irish ball down 13 on the other side Kalani Brown, a factor. Six of her eight here in the second quarter. Six, seven, getting it done. Boom! Another alert from Capital One's little robot banker, Eno. Come on, man. What are you doing? Man, I love alerts. Alert! End of half. Alert! You see that first banner up there, baby? Take a good picture of it. Yours truly was on that team. Pointing to the 1982 National Championship banner, the inaugural NCAA Championship game. Kim Mulkey, a All-American point guard at Louisiana Tech for Sanja Hogue, and then later Leon Barmore. Became an assistant under Barmore, then the associate head coach before replacing Sanja Hogue as head coach of Baylor in 2000, a champion in 2005, and then most recently behind Brittany Griner and Odyssey Sims, that 2012 championship won against the Fighting Irish. With the inaugural title banner hanging here, as are all the championship banners in Tampa. Seven assists per game. Not too shabby. Got to three final fours, the first three, in fact, as a player. Enrique Ogumbawale playing in her second final four, trying to get the Irish back in this one. Only folks to win NCAA titles as players and coaches. Tim Mulkey, Bob Knight, Dean Smith. Good punch. Here comes Ogumbawale again. Set a tough screen on Chloe Jackson, though. 
Look at that, how they recover. Yeah. I mean, it, it's phenomenal defensively how engaged Baylor is tonight. Look how hard the Irish have had to work just for a look. But it's a good one for Ogumbawale. Oh, we talked about her struggles the first and second half, but what she has done is she has sensed her team needs her now. She can't wait till the second half. And on the strength of Ogumbawale offensively, the Irish cutting, cutting back into this lead. Jackson stems the tide for the Lady Bears. Oh, these two guards are starting to heat up. On this stage for Chloe Jackson, after struggling to score a bit in the semifinal game, how good has she been here in this first half? Seven of eight, Lobo. What an impressive start for a player who had never played point guard in her college career until coming to Baylor this year as a grad transfer. But she was one of the elite scorers in the SEC. She knows what she's doing with the ball in her hands. That's great basketball. Brown to Cox. A foul is called on Turner. As soon as Kalani Brown sensed the double team, her eyes went to the other side of the rim where she knew Lauren Cox would be, threw it up high where only Cox could corral it. Well, Notre Dame wasn't matched up in transition perfectly because Agumbawale had to take Cox at the top of the key. Right. And when she cut from the top of the key down to the block after the Kalani Brown catch, I don't think Enrique wanted to go down with Lauren Cox. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of passed her off. And that's what happens in transition. Sometimes you get caught on another player than your matchup. There's a size differential, and I thought that helped Baylor execute that play. Guys, this is Baylor's bigger lineup out there with Brown, Cox, and Melissa Smith. Cox basically plays the three in this lineup. It's Turner working on Brown. Difficult. Excellent defense by Kalani Brown. Cox from distance. Oh boy, Ogumbawale did not go for that rebound. Smith ended up with the easy take and put back. Well, that's the, the issue when they go to the big lineup is can you get the defensive rebound? And they get a good look right now. Cox with the denial. Shepard, pocket pass, Turner's fouled. Brianna Turner in her final collegiate game going to the line for two. Just everything challenged for Notre Dame. It feels like they have a moment of free space, maybe an and Coming up in 223 of game time, the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report with Maria Taylor, Nell Fortner, Andy Landers. First half analysis and Rebecca Lobo, with some help, dives into the history of celebration coming up. I promise you, you'll want to stick around for it, if only for the literary genius. A little help from a man named Steve Rutter. I'll take it. 12-point game. Brown. Rimmed out, but a foul. Gumbawale, the first half in the last two Final Fours. This is her best first half of the four games that she has played, and it's still been a tough go. 5 of 15 from the floor to get those dozen. Turner picked up her second foul, sending Brown to the stretch. Well, if you're Notre Dame, you really just want to get into halftime you know, to, to be able to make a little some adjustments and see if you can, can create some better looks for yourself. I, when I look at, at spinning this forward, I know there's st still two minutes left in the half for Notre Dame. I look at a couple areas. One is the start of a possession. How great have they been this year in transition? Well, how do they fix that? you got to get stops. you got to get stops to be able to get some free points in your running game to look when you can get a free three-point shot or you can get a layup or a free jump shot. The other part of this to me, guys, is on the glass, on the offensive rebound. They have to own the end of the possession as well, and I think they need to hunt for shots beyond the arc off of those offensive rebounds instead of trying to turn and throw it up into the trees because Cox and Brown are making it really hard to score in the paint. Notre Dame first in the country in points in the paint per game. If they don't get him in transition, they're going to be hard to get. And held a one and done there off the Shepard miss with Brown securing the rebound. Here, I think what you're talking about, that three that Mabry hit to tie the game on Friday came off that rebound action. Oof. Gumbawale hits the deck hard. 
foul called here. Gumbawale sandwich right there. Yeah. She goes down, draws the foul. Still grimacing on her way up the court. It is Brown's foul. You saw the arm of Brown go down on Agumbawale for her first. I think they're double checking to make sure that it is the right person. And you just saw D. Kander put up a two and a one, indicating indeed it's Kalani Brown in the foul. Ogumbawale has got 12 of the Notre Dame 27. Michaela Vaughn is in the game. He's out there with Jessica Shepard in the front court. Top shot, Ogumbawale. Shepard offensive rebound. Prohaska hits the deck to save it to Vaughn. She's tied up by Brown. Six on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Carrie, you talked about Notre Dame when they get offensive rebounds, finding few players on the perimeter. It's hard to just see them because there's so much length, whether it's the posts or the guards, to just have that vision to find an open teammate out there. Mbawale draws a foul this time. Gonna go against Juicy Landrum. Enrique just attacking, and she's forced some shots, had some poor shots. And she's at least trying to get in there and, and make something happen for her team. Kara, did you have the shoulder shimmy that Enrique has right before she takes the free throw? <laughs> I did it tonight, right before we got here. <laughs> <laughs> of course. There it is. <laughs> no shortage of swagger in this building tonight. Well, I mean, you know, where I'm sitting, I think. This general box that I'm in, I think less swagger. But outside of that box, a lot of swagger. Stay in your box, Alex. Stop, try to stay in that box. Ten-point game. A minute to go here in the half. What a pass by Landrum to Brown. Everybody getting involved to rack up 28 paint points. Young, such a tough shot because of the length of Cox. Good job by Prohaska to deflect that out of bounds. The guards catch the basketball on the skip. Eyes inside. Beautiful seal by Kalani Brown. She loves the left side of the floor, finishing with a strong hand. Maybe not surprisingly to some people, equaled that already tonight. And two shots coming on the Pro Aska foul. Kalani Brown back to the free throw line. Great viral moment yesterday when D and Kalani were both on screen. Both have very similar mannerisms. And easily frustrated <laughs> when those free throws don't go down. Watch this. Boy, like, like mother, like daughter, huh? Uncanny. <laughs> Jeans are a strong yeah. thing, my friend. <laughs> Boy, Kalani Brown's missed four straight free throws. It just threw her hands up. Like, what am I supposed to do? She's a 78% shooter this year, right around 74 for her career. She's 0 for 5 in this game. Ball in the hands of Young. Drawn two bigs, so she finds Vaughn. A key bucket. Final seconds of the half. Jackson all the way, left it short. Brown did not. Mabry launches it, and how about Kalani Brown getting it done? Kim Mulkey did that to Kalani Brown during the Elite Eight. She grabbed her face when she came off the floor and said, keep pushing. Brown's doing it, so is Cox, and Cox is with Holly Rowe. Lauren, it seems like in that first quarter, you were everywhere, whether assisting or swatting shots.
How was it to come out and get that great momentum early? Uh, it was really good for us. We, we usually have pretty quick starts, and that was no different tonight. That's what we wanted to do. It feels like your team's been in big control in this first half, and you look at the scoreboard, it's not that much separation. What do you have to do better in the second half? Uh, we just got to just get them out of rhythm. They hit a few shots, get in rhythm. Uh, we just got to get them out of that and get another quick start. What do you say to Kalani about hitting those free throws? I just just focus. Just calm down. You're good. Just she's a great free throw shooter. She can knock him down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Largest lead was 17 for Baylor. It's a 12 point advantage at the halftime break. Time now for Maria Taylor and company. Take it, my friend. All right. Thanks, Adam. And it's time for the Northwestern Mutual halftime report. It's Maria Taylor alongside Nell Fortner and Andy Landers. And so interesting. I think Nell can tell the future because we came up at the top of our pregame show and she said, you know, it's when these lights shine bright, you find someone that could be an X Factor that she didn't know before. She called it. She called it. It's Chloe Jackson. She was five for five in that first quarter. And remember, she didn't score but six points, was three of 11 against Oregon. She's been a difference maker for Baylor. We, we've seen Chloe score like this before. Before she transferred to Baylor, she was at LSU. She was used to scoring. It's in her DNA. And, but she's started out from the get-go in this game. Look at the confidence in her. That's normally a shot she doesn't take in the regular season, but right now, this kid has it in her veins. She is going to step up in the championship game when she is needed because started off a little slow inside, not with Chloe. Steals, like a layup, <laughs> playing really well. 14 points, Coach. She's shooting at 70% right now from the field. Another thing Baylor's doing well, though, beating Notre the Dame running. at their own game. Didn't we think Notre <laughs> Dame was going to be running? game the best fast break team in the country Notre Dame not tonight Baylor has outscored Notre Dame 14 to 2 in transition it has been incredible the guards have flown down the floor pulled it up been extremely accurate from the perimeter with the jump shot they've also passed called finished at the rim Baylor's transition game has stolen the show. Notre Dame can't get back quick enough. Yeah, entering the game, remember Notre Dame was the best at scoring the ball in the paint. Part of that comes with those transition points. 50 points per game this season in the paint. Tonight, all they have is eight. And check out Baylor. They've already got 30 points yeah. in the paint, Coach. I mean, and chat, look at that. <laughs> Baylor's got 30 points in the paint. Notre Dame eight. We said before this thing started that the Notre Dame guards would have to hit some perimeter shots. That's why the only Notre Dame guard to hit any number of perimeter shots, Agumba Wale. She's had to shoot a lot. She's missed a lot, but she has scored a lot. But this is the problem for Notre Dame. Baylor's shooting 62%. When the team shoots 62%, you can't run. There's not a lot of rebounds. So that's really taking Notre Dame out of their game. Yeah, that was a great point Rebecca made throughout the game. Listen, you, where are you going to run if the ball's going through the that's net? Right. You're definitely not. Right now, only two points in the fast break for Notre Dame in the first half. Such a big part of their game. And we have plenty more to break down in this game. Emily Arena, it's the home of the 2019 Women's Final Four. We still have 20 minutes left of play. Break down what these coaches need to see from both squads when they come out of the locker room. This halftime report is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Sp AI unlocks the art of science. When you open a bottle of beer, I don't think many people actually know the level of science that's filled into that bottle. The Fighting Irish is down, but not out. Remember, they were pulled off a remarkable 15-point comeback last year against Mississippi State in the title game. They've trailed by as many as 17 points this game. So can they do it for a second straight year? Baylor is shooting at 62% from the floor right now. That's on pace to be the highest field goal percentage ever in an NCAA tournament game. The second highest was Tennessee. They shot 59%, and that was way back in 1997. Coach, I think the question is, how does Notre Dame slow down Baylor right now? <laughs> well, you know, they have to get back defensively they've given up easy points in transition they have to get their zone set quickly when they're back there I would consider doubling down from the top of the zone onto the low post make her turn back to the middle Notre Dame has to put ball pressure on these perimeter players you have to get up in them make them put it on the ground so they can't see inside to six seven Kalani Brown more ball pressure 
All right, we've got Notre Dame coming back to the court. Seniors like Marina Mabry will have to come up big in the second half if they plan on defending their national championship. Notre Dame fighting Irish right now down against Baylor. We've got 20 more minutes of play before a national champion is crowned. Will it be Enrique Agumbawale with another set of second half heroics in this one? This has been the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Sonic's new BBLTs are great. Yeah, the BB stands for bacon bacon. And the LT stands for look at those tomatoes. Well. Sonic's new 399 BBLT in Tots. Hurry, bacon goes fast. And try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. So I can buy from Enterprise Car Sales and you'll take any trade in. That's right. Great. There you go. Well, it does need to be a vehicle. But I need this out of my house. With fair, transparent value for every trade in, Enterprise makes it easy. Verizon got us VIP tickets three feet away from Justin Timberlake. And to say VIP is an understatement because I saw Justin Timberlake. So he literally looked into the phone and started dancing. Well, he was already dancing. Locked eyes and continued dancing. <laughs> I still have to like pinch myself and make sure I'm not dreaming. Every now and then I'm like, wait, did that happen? I've got photos of it, it must have. <laughs> Get more music on us with VIP tickets to the best shows like Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello. Plus, save big when you switch, only on Verizon. Before the house, before the office, the late nights and new bosses. Before the last hugs, the wins and the losses. Before building the team, before building yourself. The rise and grinds, all day, every days. Before the letter, before the dream, there was a kid who loved to play. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. For the human race, there is no escaping emotions. The trick is to control them when the pressure is on. That is what separates the good from the great. We welcome you back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Notre Dame good in some spots. Baylor was great in a lot of spots. It all equals out to a 12-point Lady Bear advantage as we get set for the start of the second half. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe in a moment as well. You saw the Baylor defense in some of those highlights. Talk some defense to me, Kara Lawson. No airspace for Notre Dame. This has been an offensive juggernaut all season long as we take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. It centers on Baylor's defense, the length. You look at what they were able to do in the first half, holding Notre Dame to just 28% from the field. They eliminated most of their options in the first half, B. Yeah, they just wouldn't let them get out in transition. And then when they got in the half court, they swarmed inside. And when you have 6'4 and 6'7 in there, even the little guys getting it done. Lauren Cox, eight boards in that half, all of them on the defensive end of the floor. The two most productive paint point teams in the country, Baylor 2, Notre Dame 1. But it's been Baylor's show in the painted area through one half so far. We know Notre Dame has the ability to come back. They've got one of the ultimate scorers in the game. Enrique Ogumbawale was with our Holly Rowe moments ago as Cox scores. Enrique Ogumbawale, you got going in the first half, so that was great. But how hard are those shots coming? This length of Baylor is something else. Uh, they're applying a lot of pressure. You know, it's really tough. And if you get to the paint, they got two bigs sitting in there. So I think we need a little bit more motion. Definitely needs to rebound better. What did Muffet McGraw ask your team to do better defensively? 
just get in front of the post. I mean, they're just getting in front of us and they're going up easy with layups. So we got to front them and, you know, be helped for the live. The good news is you're good in the second half, right? Hey, I hope so. <laughs> we got 20 more minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Great stuff, Holly. Thank you. Mabry scores to answer the Cox bucket. Back to a 12-point game. Jackson. Oh, man, talk about those strong hands, Kara, but the jump ball gives it to the Irish. Well, that's what Notre Dame needs to do because Shepard and Turner have their hands full just boxing out their assignment. So the guards have to come down, crack back like Young Diz on, does on that play and try and go get the basketball and maybe stops and guards getting rebounds can help Notre, Notre Dame get out and run. And one of the best transition offenses in the country, but a lot of that comes off rebound. In and out for Mabry. Same 10 that began this game out there to start the second half. And just a baseline runner against his own. It's Juicy Landrum, their shooter. This is what I love, is whenever Lauren Cox or Kalani Brown touches the ball, the patience they have. And so often we see post players who are hurry. Cox got it, waited for the cutter, and found her. Two assists for Cox in this game. He had seven assists in the semifinals. Excellent passing big. Shepard lost it, got it back. Nice move with the left hand finishing. She needs to be involved. She needs to be involved offensively for Notre Dame. First points of the night for Jessica Shepard. She was their leading scorer in the first half against Connecticut. Patience, oh, patience, wow. finish. It just opened up for Kalani Brown, who's got 14. got Richards on Jackie Young to start. It is Landrum against Ogumbawale. Both of them did a great job against Sabrina Ionescu in the semis. Good take by the aggressive senior Mabry. How hard is it though for Notre Dame to score? Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's, that, it's difficult and Baylor seems to score uh, with much more ease in this game. Jackson, boy, that shot is looking very confident for the grad transfer from Maryland. Now here's a player that had never played point guard in her life until she transferred to Baylor as a graduate transfer. Her previous stops did not play the position. Baylor had a need at it, and she's playing one of the best games, I think, of her career in the national championship game out of position. Brianna Turner there, that was one of the first easy wide open shots Notre Dame has gotten on the evening. Cox to mid-range, and Ogumbawale squares it. And a turnover. The frustrations on Muffin McGraw's face, apparent. Yep, reached back that right leg, went over the baseline. Stays here. Oh, they love that play for the inbounder. Pass to one of their bigs, and D.D. Richards is looking to cut into an opening, and they'll jump, they'll tap pass it right back to her and get a clean look. Oh, well, Mabry with the swipe, the strip, and the steal, and a foul on Jackson. Marina Mabry, those struggles in those first few rounds of the tournament, Struggled in the first half on Friday, but very aggressive. And that's something Muffet McGraw said they need from her. This is at halftime. Who's that? That's her sister, Michaela Mabry, who's part of uh, championship talk tonight on the ESPN app. Remember, she played in this championship game against Baylor seven years ago. Ogumbawale hits a three. Holly? That was right there. And what she told her is Chloe Jackson can't go to her left. You're letting her go right all night. We've seen her stay here and operate on the right-hand side of the cart. There it is. Force her left. She's got to force her left. That's what her big sister who played at Notre Dame was trying to tell her. Boy, Holly roll right on top of it. And this is a single-digit game. Jackson. Oh, wow, what a clutch bucket that was. Calm. Can we just revisit for a second that Holly Rowe is a next-level shopper? <laughs> ear hustling. A lot of ear hustling over there. Oh, 
Ogumbawale behind the screen. Back-to-back -back buckets for Arike Ogumbawale. Cox at the deck. Brown can't finish. Got her own miss. Out to Jackson. Boy, all Notre Dame underneath the bucket, and it ends up being a foul called against Baylor. That's three on D.D. Richards. And Notre Dame's competing on the glass with much more urgency here in the second half, especially defensively. And with D.D. Richards out of the game, remember, she only played 10 minutes in that first half. Uh, that, that lessens the disruptive play of Baylor on the perimeter. And let's see if Notre Dame can get a run going. Ogumbawale, there is a foul called on the action away from Arike. Landrum the foul, timeout on the floor. Story of this score in the championship game. Kim Mulkey told Chloe Jackson, this is why you came here, to play in the championship. She got off to a hot start in the first quarter. The paint with both of these team, teams outstanding during the year. Baylor dominated the first half inside. But now the Irish, after a very cold start in the first quarter, starting to heat it up. And we've got this down to a single-digit game, 53-44. What a game we've had so far. I love the spark that Marina Mabry has provided for this team on the offensive end. She's attacking. She's much more aggressive. We talked about the need for Notre Dame's guards to be that with that stifling Baylor front line. Jackie Young just four points. Such an integral member of this Notre Dame team. Ogumbawale got free. And Brown clears the rebound for the Lady Bears. Boy, Landrum's wide open. They're one good shooter. And Notre Dame lucks out there. Ogumbawale for Turner. What a pass. Down to seven. We heard Maria Taylor talk about it at halftime. Notre Dame, the 15-point championship comeback last year against Mississippi State. Trailed by 12 at halftime. Now, Turner and Cox battling. And Turner upset at that D. Kantner foul call. D. Kantner said, hey, hey, settle down. That's three now on Brianna Turner. This is the last two Final Fours. They did it in the semis against UConn each of the two seasons. Did it in the championship last year. With those three fouls, Turner has to come out. Michaela Vaughn is in there trying to guard Kalani Brown. Help from Mabry. Richards cuts and scores. Richards is so good at recognizing the double team and making that cut on the baseline and then finishing in the paint. Richards back on Ogumbawale, Landrum guarding Young. Ogumbawale is looking to pass. Good deflection with that Baylor length. And a jump ball gives it back to Baylor. You can't get too deep on the penetration against that Baylor length. So it's a pull-up, Jay, before you get to it or it's a pass, and I think the pass might have to be low, not high, because when Cox and Brown are coming over, we've seen their penchant for getting deflections and, and creating turnovers. Jackson through the defense, and last touch by Notre Dame, nine on the shot clock here. Cox maneuvering through traffic to finish. That's a tough take by Lauren Cox, the junior from Flower Mound, Texas. 
Mabry. And a foul called underneath. Well, every time they need a bucket, uh, they go into either Brown or Cox. And it's just a mismatch against any Notre Dame defender because of the strength, because of their ability to finish around the rim. Chloe Jackson just picked up her third foul. That's why Kim Mulkey is out of the coach's box, or close to the edge of it, I should say. Brown, and a foul is called. Kalani Brown playing like nobody's going to own the paint other than her tonight. One way, too, to slow down a team's fast break is not let them get a quick outlet. And here, initially three players swarming Kalani Brown. I didn't think Shepard fouled her. I thought no. Mabry did. Yeah. Her arm. I, yeah. th I thought that should have been on Mabry. Yeah, they tagged Shepard with her second. Landrum trying to get free. Knocks down the three. Timeout Notre Dame. I bet you the former Baylor Bear Max Muncy's feeling pretty good as the Dodgers prepare for the Rockies on Sunday Night Baseball. It's Max Muncy of Los Angeles Dodgers. Good luck to the Lady Bears tonight. Bring it home. Back in Tampa, Notre Dame, Baylor. Getting into the late stages of the third quarter. Notre Dame had cut it back down to a seven-point game. But then the 7-0 surge, including a three from Juicy Landrum, has put Baylor back up by 14. Jackson staying with Mabry. Nice back door here. Shut off. Brown coming over to help against Turner. And a foul is called. Brown picks up her second. Remember, Brianna Turner did not play during Notre Dame's NCAA championship run a year ago. A torn ACL in the second round of the 2017 tournament kept her out. A reminder to catch the Frozen Four's second semifinal from Buffalo, Denver, and UMass Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Time on ESPN2 in the ESPN app, NCAA.com for more information. Notre Dame perfect at the free throw line, 9 for 9. 12-point game inside a 2 to play in the third. Brown denied by the rim, won't be denied on the second chance. That's yeah, Baylor's overload play. Some of the surest hands in college basketball <laughs> that you're throwing to. Yep. Put it right on the money. It was a nice pass. Jackie Young get going for the Irish. Good pass to Turner. Shepard's there for the putback. Oh no, Lauren Cox went down. Cox grabbing at her left knee. And Alex Olson, the 19-year athletic trainer for Baylor, who has a very close relationship with Cox because of the diabetes that she has battled over the course of her career, immediately out to check on her, as is Kim Mulkey. And there's Lauren's parents. There was no player that Kim Mulkey was more passionate about when talking to us yesterday than Lauren Cox. She's just had oh, an incredible wow. impact on this game on both ends, and it started right from the beginning. Mulkey talked about the type of person and player that Cox is and how impactful she's been 
over her three seasons, how she makes teammates better, and how tough she is with everything that she battles that Holly told you about. We head back to check on Lauren, who's in tears as she heads towards the top. Lonnie Brown kind of stepped on her inadvertently. Taylor has to regroup. Melissa Smith has come out into the game. 12-point lead, 70 seconds for the third. Here is Brown, unable to finish. Loose out high to Richards. The shot clock did not reset, and Kim Mulkey called a timeout with four on the shot clock. So now Brenda and Dennis Cox being escorted back to make sure a left leg injury. Third time the Tampas are host here at the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. 2008 Tennessee won it here, 2015 Connecticut. Those two elite programs tonight in that rare era. You know, it is obviously a horrible injury for Lauren Cox and for her to, to leave at this stage of the game with, with Baylor in control. And as we take a look at how both teams got to this national championship game, the emotional roller coaster of a game and how you navigate that as a coach, as a player, the unknown. There's always something that pops up in a game that forces some some adverse feelings, some feelings where you're, you're unsure of what's going to happen. And the fact that Kim Mulkey has been here before, the fact that Kim Mulkey has won before, and the fact that she brings that underdog mentality to every single game she coaches, I think can only help Baylor as they enter the fourth quarter without their best player. Jackson has to beat the clock. Melissa Smith in for the injured Cox with the putback. Baylor back up by 14. There's Ogumbawale finishing at the rim. Seven in the quarter. Great job by Jess Shepard holding off Melissa Smith so she couldn't come in for the help defense. Shot clock is off. Baylor can hold for the final shot. These two teams have played pretty much even since Baylor took an 11 point lead into the second quarter. Chloe Jackson has been on it tonight. Ogobawale sees the clock. That'll count, and it goes! We've seen this happen before. It'll count. Is that the spark for Notre Dame? Can Baylor recover after an emotional roller coaster following the injury to Lauren Cox? Kim Mulkey will break things down with Holly Rowe when you come back for the fourth. Dude, what is that? Introducing the Chuck Cito Pod Ballroom. Pod baller. And why do you need a tuxedo for Mars Madness? I need to look good at the big dance. Do your tuxedo have cufflinks? Two shining moments. I love Mars Madness. It's like the prom of basketball. <laughs> oh! oh! Who's ready for the big dance? Let's go. Let's I think we are underdressed. <laughs> Welcome back to Tampa Bay here with Baylor head coach Kim Mulkey and I can't imagine the feelings going through your mind right now as you lay over your player Lauren Cox what can you tell us about the severity of her injury well if Lauren Cox didn't get up it's very severe but if we've got to go and we've got to battle and try to win this basketball game not just for her but we've worked too hard um, she's a fighter she's a competitor she's a big loss for us I could cry right now but I got to go work 
Melissa Smith came in in her stead. She'll have to be big for you down the stretch. What do you like that she immediately got on the scoring? Well, she goes to the offensive boards, but she's not the defensive presence as Dead Cox is. She's got to really battle down there and help us defensively. Thank you, Coach. Without Lauren Cox, they lose a great shot blocker, their second leading scorer, their third leading assist giver, their leading rebounder, and just a great presence for a veteran. Her length disrupts things on the defensive end, and then offensively, we've talked about her, her patience, her ability to score, and just as importantly, her, her willingness to pass to cutting teammates. I mean, this is, this is as big a loss as it gets. And you look at that and you say, well, she only has eight points. I mean, how big a deal can it be? But the genesis of so many great plays on the offensive end, it starts, it emanates from Cox mm -hmm. and her presence and her intelligence. She's a conduit for this offense and a presence on D. Smith trying to be one. She helped deny Shepard there. Tough step back by Mabry. And a foul is called. Oh, and this is a big one, too, because it's the fourth on Chloe Jackson, who's been spectacular tonight. Hand was in there. Yep. That's the right call. And I thought the, the pass was late from Jackie Young to kick it to Marina Mabry. Remember we talked about the end of possessions? I think Notre Dame can sneak in a couple open three-point attempts off the offensive rebounds, but Mabry gets bailed out with the foul by Jackson. And all of a sudden, just a hint, a hint of game pressure now for the Bears without their star, Lauren Cox. The initial action on that offensive set was posting up Jessica Shepard on Melissa Smith, trying to pick on the freshman. There's Kalani Brown. She can shoot it from there. Shepard had it knocked out of bounds by Smith. After trailing by as many as 17, the closest Notre Dame got was seven in the third quarter. Kim Mulkey just screamed at Kalani Brown, get on the block, get inside. Young working on Landrum. Jackie Young off to Turner, had it blocked but a foul. The foul was away from the block. The foul on Melissa Smith, her all second. Of, all of a sudden, something that was pretty simple for Baylor has now increased in terms of the degree of difficulty, and that's just getting a defensive rebound. Ogumbawale hits, and she's fouled. And just like that, it's a six-point game. Lauren Cox is also the leader of this Baylor team. After that foul, you saw five players walking in different directions. They need someone to bring them together, but what a shot by Arike Ogumbawale. The whole, and the number one overall seed starting to reel a little bit. Down to five in Tampa. Jackson short. Notre Dame ball. Muffet McGraw believed that the experience of Notre Dame was an advantage compared to the relative inexperience of the Baylor players. Mabry to Shepard and one. So there's the breakdown Kim Mulkey talked about. What did she say at the interview? She said, we're not the same defensive team with Melissa Smith in the game as we are with Lauren Cox in the game. The freshman at the left elbow, look at coming to the right block, gets caught on a screen. You cannot get caught on screens in a game of this magnitude. If you do, Notre Dame will make you pay. And look out now, but we've got a one possession game. And how about Muffet McGraw knowing that and running sets for Jessica Shepard to get the ball on the block. Notre Dame has scored all eight in the quarter. But what a tough take by Jackson, it wouldn't go. Brown kept it alive. Remember Jackson playing with four fouls. Melissa Smith, the freshman. How about that confident jump shot? 
five for five from the floor and into double figures. First points of the fourth for Baylor. Right back to Shepard. It rimmed out and Smith clears the rebound for Baylor. Jackson finds herself free and knocks it down. See if they set it up for Shepard again. They've done that the last couple of trips. Mabry for three. Great pass to Brown. Now starting to trade Haymakers in the fourth. Mabry's just going to trigger one and knock it down. Smith again. How about the freshman six of six from the floor? Y'all having any fun there? All of a sudden, it's turned into a shootout. My goodness. Here's Shepard against the freshman, and she delivers on the hook. Shepard scoreless in the first half, six in the second. Inside of six to go. Richards draws the bump from Ogumbawale. For the first on Arike. I'm impressed with both sides in this. I mean, Baylor has, has recovered. They were staggering there for a bit. Yep. Well, they're recovering. And Notre Dame has smelled a little bit of blood here, at least for, uh, with Baylor defensively. And they're definitely playing more confidently on the offensive end. More movement and a little more giddy up in their step. Speaking of Gideon, Ogumbawale can't finish. Good denial by Brown. Last touch by Baylor. We talked about it, Kara. The Cox injury slowed Baylor down. Notre Dame has taken advantage without the All-American on the floor for Baylor. Looking for Mabry again. <laughs> There is Cox, trying to make it back to the floor. This game is suddenly tied. Shepard somehow snares the rebound. Irish looking for their first lead since the first five points of the game. Turner threw it off of Landrum, but I think it may have gone off the leg of Turner, and they do correct the call. Baylor ball, can you believe this? From down 17 to knot it up at 74. The NCAA women. We bought a house in a neighborhood with a lot of other young couples. Then we noticed something strange. Oh, could you uh, make me a burger? Oh, you're but a little bit loose with the heart rate right now. Suddenly a tie game as the championship is on the line. Marina Mabry, the all-time leading three-point shooter in Notre Dame history earlier this season passed up her own sister in the top five Michaela going nuts so's Marina who's got a dozen in the fourth quarter and what was a 17 point second quarter deficit has been erased Melissa Smith puts Baylor back in front how are you feeling Holly Rowe well that's actually what Kim Mulkey just asked her players on the bench she looked at them and said are you guys having fun? She said, they are coming at Melissa Smith defensively. We all have to help her. They're trying to pick on our freshmen. 
And now the senior Ogumbawale comes back to tie the game at 76. Since Lauren Cox went out with the injury, plus 12. Cox is on the end of the bench for Baylor right now. They're all American. Landrum floating it. Shepard the rebound. Remember the Irish have not led since 3-2. to two. Mabry swatted out by Smith. What a play. Richards in traffic. Looking for help. Skies it for Jackson who saved it. No. And a foul called against Jackie Young of Notre Dame. Yeah, the right forearm, a nudge. But yeah, right call, when, right call. When a player's left the floor, right? Just yep. a, enough when a player's left the floor to carry her out of bounds. What incredible shot making by both squads here in the fourth. Brenda Pantoa blew the whistle. Seems like everything was cleared up. McGraw and Mulkey seeking title number three. Richards not much of a shooter. Landrum is. Rims out to Ogumbawale. 29 points for Ogumbawale. On the drive. Lost it. What's the call? Decanter says it will stay at this end of the floor. And a foul was called there. Melissa Smith got Ogumbawale on the arm on the drive in. And that'll be the fourth now on Smith, the freshman. Right yep, right there. Yep. Good call. Good call. From the opposite official. All right, now all of a sudden the Irish have missed two straight free throws after making their first 13. That was just the third miss of the tournament for Enrique Ogumbawale. The ball needs to touch Kalani Brown's hands in the paint if you're Baylor. It has to. Irish in front for the first time since the first. Jackson's floater won't go. Turner tapped it out of bounds to Baylor. How about this? Two straight Final Fours, four straight comebacks by Notre Dame. They've come back to take the lead. Still a long way to go. In and out for Jackson. Ogumbawale. Free. Left it short. Young nearly stripped it from Smith, but she clears. Richards. Running into Turner and a blocking foul. That will be the fourth on Brianna Turner, and now Richards slow to get up. And Richards, good to see her back up on her feet. Kind of hit knees there yeah. a little bit. And Richards is going to go to the bench. Moon Urson is back into the game. And Kim Mulkey wants to get organized. She's going to use a timeout. We saw Lauren Cox at the end of the bench. She's hopping on one leg to try to join that huddle, Holly Rowe. On the left knee. She was coming out of the x-ray room here, so it does appear to be a left knee injury. Baylor Athletics not giving a statement on what the actual injury is, but clearly not returning to this game. Thank you for that update. Again, since Cox went out at the 122 mark of the third quarter, Baylor's 12-point lead has disintegrated. Notre Dame has the lead. There are Lawrence parents, both college players in their own right. Brenda played at SMU. Dennis played at Central Methodist. And her teammates have to help her back to her spot so she can just continue to cheer in this game.
Fresh shot clock for Baylor. Brown into the paint. Felt like it's been a while since we've seen that. There you go. Finally, finally get it to the big girl. That's your advantage on the offensive end of the floor. She was composed, and that's who Baylor has to go through for the rest of this game. Get her touches. And they got her on the move in a pick and roll. Sometimes if it's hard and you can't get it on the block, get, get the big guy on the move. Mabry, no good with the left. Turner sprinted it down, denied by the rim, cleared by Smith. Two minutes to go in the fourth. Title hanging in the balance in a one-point game. Here comes the overload play again. The double on Brown. The pass knocked away, saved by Landrum. Eight to shoot. Blocked by Turner. Shot clock winding down. Landrum, no good on the three. Turner with the rebound. Here comes Ogumbawale. Lost it off of her foot, out of bounds to Baylor. 91 seconds to go. How about last time down on the floor? We saw Brianna Turner with a huge block against Connecticut in the semifinals. A huge block again here. Then corralling the defensive board as well. She has been huge. Muffin McGraw said she's the difference. That's why they're as good as they are or as good as they have been because of Brianna Turner on that back line. She did that with four fouls. Brown wants it back. Here's Smith. Nothing settled down into the hands of Mabry. 60 seconds to a title. Ogumbawale is free for three in the lead. Jackie Young skies for the board. Mabry to put him in front. Shepard the rebound. On her way back up and a foul. That is the fifth foul on Alyssa Smith. Boy, the freshman putting together one heck of a confident performance. But now without Smith and Cox, you're down to just Brown on that elite front line. And Smith thought that just the way she's reacting makes me think maybe she thought she only had three fouls when she committed that last one, but the official score has her at five now instead of four. So Moon Urson does have to come back in. Baylor has spent the majority of the year being the bigger team, being the team with a dominant front line. And now with 48 seconds left, they are the smaller team to try to win a title. Suddenly, the Irish starting to miss some key free throws. Shepard at the line. This game's tied at 78. 45 seconds remain. Jackson, in her final game, puts Baylor in front with 33 seconds to go. Twenty eight point six remains Chloe Jackson Kim Mulkey said this is why you came here to play in this game Oh, the senior has not flinched in this run by Notre Dame The point guard who never played point guard in her life until this year for Baylor Puts her team up to down the stretch in the most important game of the season and now the best defensive team in the country has to lean on what? their defense for one final possession to try and secure this victory. Take a breath, settle in. We remind you that you can stay tuned for the championship net cutting ceremony brought to you by Werner Ladder coming up after the game. The ESPN app and ESPN3.
Talk to Muffin McGraw today at shoot around and what did she talk about in terms of their play calling? I have one play that I like for a two point shot. I have one play that I like for a three point shot. What's common about them? Going through a recap. Yeah, recap. <laughs> <laughs> Baylor, no more fouls to give. They have the possession arrow. Here's Shepard on the drive. Too strong, but a foul is called. 16.1 to go. They tried to get diagonal down for Arike coming free at the top of the key. I thought Moon Urson was terrific in defending Arike. So the bailout was a Shepard flash to the ball, and she used her superior quickness on that play to get to the free throw line. Chance to tie it at the line with two. So again, screen the screener. We get it at the end, and you see Shepard gets a step on Brown. Great job by her to improvise at the end of that play. To tie the game. 16 seconds left. Kim Mulkey will call timeout and advance the ball. For the theme for this weekend, fate. My, how fate has lifted us up over and over again in this one. What a thriller we've had right down to the wire again. Again, the championship net cutting ceremony brought to you by Warner Ladder coming up after the game. Remember, this game had a margin of 17 in the second quarter. It was 12 in the third when Cox went down, and since then, the Irish have clawed back. We knew that if Notre Dame was going to have a fighting chance in this one, their guards were going to have to get loose a little bit. It's exactly what Agumbawale and Mabry have done in this fourth quarter. Perimeter shooting has gotten Notre Dame back in this game. And they've also gotten huge plays from Jessica Shepard on the block when Muffet McGraw knew they could pick on that position against Baylor defensively. Irish do have one foul to give. Baylor has a timeout if they want to use it. Jackson, Richards, Landrum, Brown, and Urson for the championship. It's Jackson. On the drive for the lead. Got it to go. 3.9 left. Timeout Notre Dame. Same action late in the Oregon game. Chloe Jackson flying off the screen to her right and strong hand using that superior quickness. I'll be honest, guys, I'm surprised that Notre Dame did not switch this. I'm surprised they didn't switch it because it was Richards who was setting the screen, who's a guard. That's an easy switch to keep it in front. Once Chloe Jackson gets downhill, good luck. Even for the defensive MVP of the Irish, Brianna Turner, right over her outstretched hands. A nice play call and a good job using the speed as a weapon for Jackson to put Baylor up to. I thought Turner was going to get a piece of it. We've seen her make spectacular plays throughout the course of this tournament on the defensive end. No timeouts for Notre Dame. No fouls to give for Baylor. Bears have the possession. Happened a year ago when the ball was in Ogumbawale's hands. Break it down for the final 3.9. Well, if I'm Baylor, I'm doing, I'm instructing who's ever guarding Enrique Ogumbawale to do the same thing I did last year. It's a face guard, yeah. and it is do not let her get the basketball. Make someone else tie the game or beat us, but do not let it be 24. I've seen that movie before. I don't want to see it, it, it again right here. It'll be Young on the inbound, Landrum guarding. And Kim Mulkey got a look at what Notre Dame was doing. She counters with her final timeout, Holly Rowe. Well, guys, this was very interesting. Kim Multi just asked her two guards, Moon Ursa and, and Chloe Jackson, can you trap Arike? She wanted their answer, like, do you think you can get it done without fouling? She also talked about the importance of not letting Marina Mabry get the ball. She's got those two points or those two three-point shooters covered right now, but I love that she's getting that feedback from her team. Can you do it? Oh, listen, this is this is exactly what you want in a national championship game. I mean, how lucky are we to sit here and see a one possession game again coming off the heels of what Notre Dame was able to achieve last season. You, you have to think you're going to give Enrique Agumbawale a look, but you trapping somebody on Notre Dame will be open and you can't forget inside out of bounds plays late. 
you can never lose track of the inbounder. Are you going for the tie or the win right now? I'm going for the best available shot. Okay. And the reason I say that is with Cox out and with Smith already fouled out, yeah. I'm okay to run it back for five more minutes if I'm Notre Dame. So I'm certainly not sold out for the three-point shot. Turner, Mabry, Ogumbawale, Shepard, all seniors. Young to inbound. Ogumbawale, denied! Young! No! Whistle. 1.9 and a foul was called. And remember, no timeouts for Baylor. They cannot advance the ball. Two free throws, the biggest ones of her life to tie it for Ogumbawale and the Irish. Oh, in and out. Boxing out is paramount right now for Baylor, especially on Brianna Turner. She can get to the offensive glass here. Muffin McGraw just mouth to Arike, miss it. It's good with 1.9 left. Baylor just has to get it in. Inbound to the corner, Jackson. And a whistle with .3 remaining. But they're not shooting because they had one to give. And with no timeout to advance. All Baylor needs to do is inbound the basketball. You have to sell out Notre Dame for a five second call here. I mean, that's your best chance. Or a quick steal and heave at the rim. It'll be Richards to inbound. They get it in, they win. Denied by Turner, and that's it! The Baylor Lady Bears, seven years later, are back at the top of college basketball with their third national championship. And guess who's in the middle of it all? Lauren Cox. Someone take it. An emotional roller coaster ride tonight for so many on the floor, including Chloe Jackson, who gets the hug from Kim Mulkey. Let's go over to Holly Rowe. Chloe, you were a graduate transfer. You've never played point guard in your life. How did you come up as a dominant point guard in the national championship game? Man, my teammates and my coaches, they believe in me so much. And we had to do it for LC. She's, been, she's got us here. We had to finish the job for her. How hard was that to see Lauren Cox, your leader, go down and then try to gather yourselves and have composure down the stretch? It was really hard because she's our leader. She's the reason why we're here. But we had to come together as a family, together to Tampa. We had to finish it. As you're seeing one of the game's best shooters in history, Arike Agumbawale, try to sink two free throws, what's going through your mind to preserve that win? Man, we were just praying. I was just hoping she would miss one, and she did. She missed the first one, but she's a great player. She's going to have great success in the next level. As you went through the handshake line, she grabbed you and whispered in your ear. What did she tell you? Just a great job. Congrats on a win. And I told her you're going to have great, great success in the next level. You just, just knew she's going to be great. Chloe, you came here, and now you're going to go out as a national champion. What has it taken from you at Baylor? Sure. It's just all hard work, patience, just believing in God. I never knew what, what my plan was going to be, but I just believed him all the way. I wouldn't have been here without him. 
Thank you. Thank you. Chloe Jackson in her final collegiate game with an incredible performance, 26 points, and there is the end of the college career of Arike Ogumbawale. How about that roller coaster in a matter of 12 months for Arike Ogumbawale? And Kramer Robertson checking in from Northwest Arkansas, where he's playing double A ball for the St. Louis Cardinals to congratulate mom. Let's go over to Holly Rowe with Kim Mulkey. Good. Kim, you are one of the tougher people I've ever seen in basketball, and yet the tears are streaming down your face. Why? Lauren Cox, my God, she's the heart and soul of our team. And I just know she's hurt because that kid would have gotten up. But you know what? God is good. He blessed these kids, they fall through it. Melissa Smith, Kalani battled their butts off on the boards. Chloe Jackson, I can name all of them. I just know when you lose a big time player in the middle of a national championship game, you're not supposed to win. And yet your kids rallied in moments. I mean, this is a tight game and possessions at the end. What composure did they find despite that injury? They just kept doing what we've been taught to do, and that's guard people. We just beat the defending national champions. That team is so good, so talented. You're going to see those guys play at the next level. And, um, wow, I, I, you know, I, I just, I'm emotional for a lot of reasons, but mostly for Lauren Cox, and I'm so happy. These are tears of joy, but they're also tears of thinking about injuries. Christy Wallace last year. Lauren Cox, those kids give me everything they have, and sometimes life doesn't seem fair. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time, and thank you. The fairness is you will be national champions through all the adversity. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Holly, Lauren Cox was hospitalized 17 months ago during a trip to UCLA, battling a life-threatening complication with her diabetes. At that same time, Kim Mulkey left the team to be with her daughter, Mackenzie Fuller, who's on staff with her, and her husband, Clay, as they battled through the loss of Kim Mulkey's first grandchild, Scout Marie, during their pregnancy. Think about the emotional roller coaster of this Baylor program, and after all of that, there is a tournament. All of the emotions coming full that, circle buddy? tonight. How about that game? Kim Mulkey joining a very elite group of coaches. Baylor, this is why you came to Baylor. That's what she told Chloe Jackson. And sure enough, Jackson with the go-ahead bucket. The missed free throw from Arike Ogumbawale, the hero of last year's championship. The reaction of the bench, including the injured Lauren Cox. The twists, the turns, leading to this moment that Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox have awaited. Muffet McGraw, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, denied a chance to repeat in what was a spectacular championship game from Tampa. Baylor, your 2019 champ. We'll wrap it up after this. Cole, appreciate you recommending these stormproof windows. No problem. I'm always thinking ahead. Look under the couch. You look under the couch.